Today we are going to be working on 13c, which is the application of systems of equation. This is going to be our day number one. So essentially it's going to be word problems. Our content objective is students will be able to uh, solve word problems that lead to a multi-step equation or a system of two equations. Our language objective is students will be able to translate a word problem to a multi-step equation or a system of two equations. So we're really going to stress on how do we take the words and convert them into equations so that we can go ahead and solve it algebraically. Why am I learning this? Well, it's important for many real world problems and you're going to see some examples today within the next few lessons, including today. So first of all, there are many reasons why we learn mathematics. One reason is so that we can solve problems that we may occur encounter in life. So over the next several lessons, we will be using multi-step equations and systems of equations to solve these problems. So I'm, I'm going to be using some examples here. So let's take a look at our first one. It says here, a baseball team played 162 games. They won 44 more games than they lost. How many games did they lose? So there's two things that I don't know. I do not know um, how many games that they lost and how many games they won. So what I'm going to do is choose a variable. Okay, I can. I often like to choose a variable that kind of correlates to what I'm trying to solve. So I, you don't necessarily have to use x. You don't necessarily have to use y. In a case like this, I always assign the variable to the smaller value, generally speaking. Do you always have to do this? No, but that's a tip that I often give to my students and it's something that I do. So here, since they won 44 more games than they lost, that means they obviously had more losses. So I'm going to go ahead and let L represent the loss. So here, just so, just so I know, L is going to represent the number of losses. The loss. Oops. There you go. Losses. So here, L represents the number of losses. Therefore, if the wins, well, there's 40, they won 44 more games than they lost. More than, that's automatically a, a switch word, okay? But it also makes me think we're definitely adding something. We're adding 44. However, you should be asking yourself, I'm adding 44 to what? It's 44 more than the games that they lost. Here, I already decided that L is going to represent the number of losses. So it should be you take the number of losses and then you add 44. Okay, so at this point, we do know one fact that the baseball team played a total of 162 games. So at this point, I'm going to combine how many games they lost with essentially how many games they won, which is L plus 44, and it's going to equal 162. So all you need to do here is go ahead and combine like terms, which is going to give me 2L plus 44 equals 162. Get rid of your constant by subtracting 44 from both sides. 2L equals, let me do some side work, 162 divided, I'm sorry, so minus 44. I'm going to have to borrow. That's going to be 8, 1, 1. So 118, however, I still need to get rid of that 2. So L equals, let's see, 118 divided by 2, that's going to go 5 times. Remainder of 1, that's going to go in 9 times evenly. So this team experienced 59 L's. What do L's represent? Well, it represents the number of losses. So let me clear this real quick. Since I did get L equals 59, and again, L represents the number of losses, I would say the baseball team lost 59 games. Now, if by chance they did ask me how many wins did they have, I would go ahead and use this right here, which is L plus 44. So I would take the number of losses, which was 59, and add 44, and that would then tell me how many wins they experienced as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and have you pause the video and give number two a shot. Okay, so let's see how you did. Well, it says here, Raymond sells cars and trucks. He has room on his lot for 510 vehicles. So that looks like important information. He has a total um, 
He has space for 510. From experience, he knows that he, his profit will be greatest if there is 190 more cars than trucks. How many of each vehicle should he have? Well, right now, there's two things we don't know. We don't know how many trucks and we don't know how many cars. So again, you're going to assign a variable and preferably it should be a variable that you can use to easily correlate to whatever you're looking for. Um, so it's between a T or a C. And you, I usually like to pick the variable to go with the smallest value. So here, are there more cars or are there more trucks? Well, it says um, there's 190 more cars than trucks. So by the looks of it, there's less trucks. So I'm going to go ahead and use T to represent um, my variable. So I'm going to say T is basically the number of trucks. Okay. So here it says there's 190 more cars than trucks. Okay. So what does that mean? I'm adding 190. But to what? I'm adding, I'm adding 190 to the number of trucks, which is T. So I'm taking the number of trucks and adding 190. Okay. Now, this number comes into play because we know that the, the total amount should be 510. So if I take the number of trucks, which is T, plus the number of cars, which is T plus 190, it's supposed to equal 510. So at this point, since I'm only dealing with one variable, I'm actually able to solve for T. So let's do that. If I combine T and T together, I get 2T plus 190 equals 510. Get rid of your constant. You're left with 2T equals, I'm going to do some side work, 510 minus 190. This is 0. I'm going to have to borrow. It's 2. This is 3. So 320. Simply divide both sides by your coefficient, and I'm going to say that t equals 160. So t equals 160. What does t represent? Well, let's look back. t, according to what I wrote, is the number of trucks. So at this point, I know that there's 160 trucks. Okay. So if the question was how many vehicles should we have, first of all, I know there's 160 trucks, okay? But then I also want to know how many cars there were. The cars was basically T plus 190 because there was 190 more cars and trucks. So if there is 160 trucks, and let's see, how many cars are there? Well, you're going to do T plus 190. So here, I have a little space down here. I'm going to do T plus 190. So in this case, I'm replacing T with 160. 160 plus 190 is going to give me 350. So there are 350 cars. So one quick way of kind of just checking, is it reasonable? Um, there should be a total of 510. So if I add 160 plus 350, would that be 510? The answer is yes. So to answer the question, I would say there's 160 trucks, oops, it's plural, and there's 350 cars. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at number three. It says, the length of a rectangle is seven more than the width. If the perimeter is 70, find the width and length. So I'm not sure if you remember this, but we've done problems like this in the past with, um, in seventh grade, even in eighth grade as well. So let's go ahead and just do a quick refresher of how you would do that. So here, just to give you an idea, if we're looking at a rectangle, because that's a shape that they mentioned, um, if we're looking at perimeter, how do we find the perimeter? Well, we take the sum of the lengths, and we take the, the sum of the widths, and we combine them together, and that's what's going to give us the perimeter of 70 here. Okay, so... In this case, there's two things I don't know. I don't know the length and I don't know the width. So I do recognize that there's two widths. So let's put two W's and then there's two uh, lengths. So use two L's. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and pick a variable to represent one of them. And again, I normally use the smallest value as the variable. 
So in this case, since the length of a rectangle is 7 more than the width, the width is going to be obviously shorter. So since the width is shorter, w is going to be our variable. And just as a reminder up top, I'm going to say that w represents the width of the rectangle. Okay, now that I have that established, I need to figure out what the length is in comparison to the width. Well, it says the length of the rectangle is 7 more than. Okay, so 7 more than, I automatically think of adding 7. Okay, but what am I adding 7 to? I'm adding 7, it says 7 more than the width. So I'm going to add 7 to the width, which we just so happen to label W. So we're taking W, which is the width, and we're adding 7 onto that. So if this length is W plus 7, Let's go ahead and parentheses around it so we can recognize that's the expression. Um, then this length, since they're both the same, would also then be w plus 7. Okay, so now I'm just going to erase this so we have a little bit more space. So now that we have that established, if I was trying to figure out the perimeter, what would I do? Well, normally I would take the width plus the width plus the length plus the other length, and that should equal 70. So here we have our setup. Now it's just a matter of solving for w. So at this stage, we can combine like terms. So 1w plus 1w plus 1w plus 1w gives me a total of 4w. And a positive 7 plus another positive 7 gives me plus 14 equals 70. So simply subtract 14 from both sides, and I'm left with 4w equals 56. Now simply divide both sides by 4, and I'm left with w equals 14. Now just a friendly reminder, w represents the width of the rectangle. So I would say the width of the rectangle is 14, okay? And since there's no units, I would just leave it as 14. And therefore, what would the length be? Just a reminder, the length, okay, is w plus 7, because the length is 7 more than the width. So what you could do here is simply replace w with the value that we got, which is 14. So what's 14 plus 7? It is 21. So I would say the length is 21. Okay, so for number 4, what I would like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, so let's see how well we did. So number 4 is almost identical to the previous one, except the numbers are different, but the type is exactly the same. So here it says the perimeter of a rectangle is 144 inches. The width is three times as big as the length. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. So just like the previous one, the things that we do not know about this rectangle is the widths and the lengths. And we do recognize in a rectangle there's two widths and two lengths, and that's why I went ahead and did that. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and assign a variable to the smallest value. So here it says the width is three times as big as the length, which means the length is the shorter side. So I'm going to go ahead and use L to represent the length. And here, just so my L doesn't look like a 1 or any other um, anything else, I'm going to go ahead and use a cursive L to represent the length of the rectangle. Okay. So now that I have that established, um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I should write for W. Well, W, the width, is three times as big as the length. So it's three times as big as the length. So I'm going to put three times the length, which is L. We normally don't write three times L. We just put three L. So here the width is three L, so this width would also be three L. So the other thing is, since we know that the perimeter is 144, the width of all of these sides okay, should add up to 144. So now that I have this equation, I could solve for L. So let's do that. Here I'm going to combine like terms. There's three L's plus another three L's is six plus another L is seven plus another L is eight. So I have eight L equals, let's make that look like an L instead of an E. 8L equals 144. Now simply divide both sides by 8, and I'm left with L equals, let's see, it goes in once, 
and then it was going to go eight times. So the length here, and notice I know it's length because I said L is the length of the rectangle. I would say the length is 18. Now, what about the width? The width is three times the length, so three times L. So if L is 18, three times 18 is going to give me 54. So my width is 54. Okay, so again, L was just 18. That's how I got 18. But the width is 3L. So that's basically 3 times 18, which gave me 54. Okay, so let's keep moving on. Now let's take a look at number five. It says here, Jill spent $42 on shirts. Short sleeve shirts cost $4 and long sleeve shirts cost $5. She bought a total of nine shirts. How many of each kind did she buy? Okay, so this one's gonna be different than the ones that we've been practicing. We're gonna to have to come up with two equations where it's going to require us to use more than one variable. Okay, so here, I'm talking about short sleeve shirts, which cost $4, okay? And then I have long sleeve shirts that cost $5, okay? Um, for short sleeve, I'm going to go ahead and use S to represent that. And then for long sleeves, I'm going to go ahead and use L. So you can kind of see S for short, L for long. Now, could you have used X? Could you have used Y? Absolutely. But for me, it's a little bit easier to see right away what S is going to represent and what L is going to represent. Okay. So here, um, I know some other information. Okay. First of all, I recognize that there was nine total shirts okay so since i'm using s to represent the number of short sleeves and l to represent the number of long sleeves i can go ahead and say hey the number of short sleeves s plus the number of long sleeves l is supposed to equal the amount of shirts altogether, which is nine so that's gonna be my first equation now what about the cost well if i wanted to know how much i spent on short sleeves i would have to take into account how much they cost, which is $4. So I would take four times the number of short sleeves that were purchased, so four times S, plus the cost of long sleeves. So again, I have to take into account how much they cost, so I would take $5 times how many long sleeves there were, so L. And that's gonna equal how much Jill spent, which is $42. So notice here we have two equations. At this point, that's part of our objective. I need you to be able to translate this word problem into equations so we can go ahead and solve it algebraically. So now that we have our two equations, we can go ahead and solve. So we have options. We can definitely solve using substitution or we can solve using elimination. Okay, so for this one, I'm actually gonna go ahead and solve by using substitution. Now, some of you are thinking, why am I not using elimination? Um, because some students do prefer substitution over elimination, so I'm going to try to do a balance of both. So in a case like this, I'm definitely going to choose to isolate the S or the L. So um, here, if I isolate L, I would be distributing a 5. And if I isolate the S, I'd be distributing a 4. So to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and isolate my S. So here, in order to do that, I'm going to subtract L from both sides which is gonna leave me with S equals negative L plus nine. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna go ahead and write the other equation, which is four S plus five L equals 42. I'm gonna take this expression here and substitute it in for S. So now I have four times negative L plus nine plus five L equals 42. So now you're gonna distribute, we have negative four L Please don't forget to distribute the second term. So that's plus 36 plus 5L equals 42. I'm going to combine like terms. So now I'm left with L plus 36 equals 42. Simply subtract 36 from both sides. And I'm left with L equals 6. Now, what does L represent? First of all, hopefully you're thinking, yeah, L long sleeves because you made that connection a long time ago, but if you need that, if you refer back to your notes, L does represent the number of long sleeves. So you could say she bought nine long sleeves. Now what about short sleeves? Well, I'm gonna have to plug it into one of the other equations. I'm gonna definitely use the first one. 
If I have s plus l equals 9, if I go ahead and take 6 and plug it in for l, s plus 6 equals 9, therefore s must be 3. Since s represents the number of short sleeves, I can say that she bought 3 short sleeves and 9 long sleeves. And that's it. Okay, so with that said, I want you to go ahead and try number 6 on your own. Okay, so let's check out how we did. So here it says there are 79, 79 paid admissions to a game. The price was $9 for adults, that's important, uh, and $3 for children. The amount raised was $147. How many adults and how many children attended? Forgot to circle this here. There was 79 paid admissions. Now, the thing that we don't know is how many adults and how many children. So guess what? That's probably going to be our variable. Okay, so we're going to say, hey, A represents the number of adults. C represents the number of children. So again, you're making that correlation A for adults and C for children. But again, you could use X and Y. It's totally, um, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So feel free to do that if you want to. Okay, so... First of all, we know there's 70 pay, 79 paid tickets, so what can I do? Well, for my first equation, I'm thinking, okay, well, the number of um, adults plus the number of children should definitely equal 79, because altogether, there were 79 tickets paid. Now, for my second equation, when I'm trying to um, take into consideration how much they earned altogether, what would you have to do? Well, you'd have to figure out the cost of adults, which is $9 for every adult, so 9 times A, plus the amount for children, which is $3 for every child, so that's going to be plus 3C. And, of course, when we total that up, it should equal how much they raised, which was $447. So at this point, we have both equations, and so we're going to be able to go ahead and solve. So, with our two equations here, again, we have a choice. We can totally use elimination or we could use substitution. Since we used substitution in the last example, let's go ahead and use elimination here. Taking a look at these two equations, I'm going to ask myself, would it be easier to eliminate the A's or would it be easier to eliminate the C's? For me, it's going to be easier to eliminate C's just because I would only have to distribute by negative 3. Now, if I want to um, eliminate the A's, I would have to distribute everything by negative 9. And the smaller the number, the better for me. So I'm going to go ahead and change this first equation by multiplying by negative 3. I'm going to make sure I distribute it to every term, which is going to give me negative 3a minus 3c equals negative 237. So I got this number simply by multiplying negative 3 to 79. Now, this first second equation is it's going to stay exactly the same, so I'm just going to stack it underneath. So at this point, I would see that the C's canceled each other out, and I'm just left with 6A equals 210. Now, just simply divide both sides by 6, and that's how you would get A equals 35. Now, A equals 35 means nothing until you understand what A represented in the first place. So here, A represents the number of adults, so basically there is 35 adults. But now let's take into consideration how many children children there were. Well, altogether there was 79. So if you go ahead and take uh, put in 35 for adults, you're left with this expression here, 35 plus C equals 79. Go ahead and get rid of your constant, and you would be left with C equals 44. So again, what does C represent? It represents the number of children. So here I would say there are 33, 35 adults and 44 children. Okay, so 33, sorry, 35 adults and 44 children tickets were purchased. Okay, so please make sure you remember what the variables represent because at the end you are answering a question. You can't simply write A equals 35, C equals 44. You're not answering the question of how many adults and children attended. There should be a question mark there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at number seven. It says here a farmhouse shelters 10 animals. Some are sheep and some are ducks. Altogether, there are 32 legs. How many of each animal are there? So the question is, how many sheep and how many ducks are there? So that's probably going to be our variable. I'm going to go ahead and let 
D represent the number of ducks and S represent the number of sheep. Okay, so we're gonna make two, at least two equations because we have two variables. So here, how many animals all together? Well, if I take the number of ducks and I take the number of sheep, which is S, it should equal 10 animals. So that's gonna be my first equation. Now, what about how many legs they have all together? Well, here, if I'm trying to get an equation of the amount of legs they have, I have to take consideration to how many legs the ducks contribute, which is two legs for every duck. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply two times D, because every duck has two legs. And then what about sheep? Well, since sheep have four legs each, I would have to go ahead and take the number of sheep and multiply it by the four legs they have, which is 4S. So they did say that altogether there are 32 legs, so there, that would conclude our two equations. So now that we have our two equations, I can go ahead and choose, do I wanna use substitution? Do I wanna use elimination? So at this stage, I'm actually gonna pick the one I prefer, which in this case is going to be elimination. So here, I wanna go ahead and eliminate the Ds. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to to distribute this uh, negative two to the first equation, which gives me negative two D minus 2s equals negative 20. Now this is going to stay the same, so 2d plus 4s equals 32. Here the d's cancel out, which I wanted to happen, um, leaving me with just 2s equals 12. Simply divide both sides by 2, and I'm left with s equals 6. Just keep in mind, what does S represent? S represents a number of sheep. So according to this equation, there are six sheep. Now, if you recall from the word problem, they said there was 10 animals altogether. So if six of them are sheep, most of you can conclude that there is four ducks. But if you want to solve it algebraically, choose one of these equations, such as the first one, which is D plus S equals 10. Simply take this value, substitute it back in, and you would go ahead and solve and still get that D equals four. Just remember D represents the number of ducks, so you can say that there are four ducks and six sheep. Now, if you wanted to quickly assess if things look right, ask yourself, is there four ducks? that would be eight legs. If there was six sheep, that'd be 24. Eight plus 24, does it equal the 32 legs altogether? Absolutely. Did four plus six give you the 10 animals that was in there in the barn? The answer is yes. So there's ways you can definitely check your work and I highly suggest that you do this because this kind of confirms for you, you're doing it right and um, all of the information match up with what was given. Okay, so let's go ahead and try the very, uh, not the very last problem, but let's go ahead and try number eight. Pause the video and see how well you do. So for number eight, hopefully you read the instructions. It says write the system for the following situation. You do not need to solve. So all I care about is can you set it up to be solved? Okay, well let's see. A class used cars and buses to go on a field trip. They use nine vehicles to go on the trip. Each car holds three students and each bus holds 35 students. If 91 students went on that trip, then how many of each type of vehicle did the class use? So first of all, nine total vehicles is important. Every car holds three. Every bus holds 35. That's also important. Now what else? There are 91 students altogether. So all of that's important, okay? Since they're asking us how many of each vehicle did the class use, that's probably gonna be my variable because that's what I'm um, wanting to figure out. So if I'm talking about a car, I'm probably gonna use C for the number of cars. And if I'm talking about a bus, probably gonna use B to represent the number of buses. So for our first equation, What's it gonna be? Well, I know that there's nine vehicles all together, so basically the number of cars, which is C, plus the number of buses, which is B, should definitely total up to nine. Now, what about our second equation? Well, here, 
if we're considering there is a total of 91 students, how did we come up with 91 students? Well, each car holds three students, so that's definitely going to be three times the amount of cars we have, which is C, plus um, 35 for each bus, so we're definitely going to multiply 35 by the number of buses we have, and that's what's going to give us our total of 91 students, because again, each car carries three students and each bus carries 35. Okay, so this is all you had to do because all we're looking um, for you to do is to write the system, okay, and you did not need to solve. So this is all you have to do. So with that said, go ahead and try number nine by yourself. Again, you're just going to write the system. You're not going to solve. So go ahead and see how well you do. Okay, so let's see how well we did. It says here at Peter's Printing Company, LLC, there are two kinds of printing presses. Model A, which can print 80 books per day, that's probably important, and Model B, which can print 65 books per day, probably important. The company owns a total of 10 printing presses, and this allows them to print 680 books per day. How many of each type of press do they have? Well, again, the question is how many of each press do they have? How many of Model A? How many of Model B? So pretend if this is model A, A is probably going to represent model A. If this is model B, model B, I mean B is probably going to represent the model B. Could you have used X's? Can you have used Y? Absolutely. But using your own variables is probably going to be a lot easier to identify, oh, this is the amount of model A's and this is the amount of model B's. Okay. So what is the equation going to be? Well, first of all, let's do the most basic one. I know that there's a total of uh, 10 machines. So I should write here, it's not model A, it's the number of model A's and the number of model B's. Okay, so here, if A represents the model of A's, I'm gonna go ahead and take A, add that to the amount of model B's, and that should definitely equal 10. Now for the second equation, I need to pull in into consideration how much they can print per day because I do have a total of 680 books every day. So how did we come up with 680 days? Sorry, did I say days? I mean 680 books per day. So we do know that there are um, 80 books for every model A that they have. So what you could do is simply multiply 80 books by the amount of model A's they have. And then we know that model B can um, print 65 books per day. So taking into consideration the amount of model B's you have, you're simply going to multiply that by 65. And that would give you the total of the 680 books. So this is going to be the two equations that you need, and you can go ahead and stop there. You wouldn't have to take it any further. So please make sure you read instructions very carefully. It might be a case of you just setting up the system, and then someone might actually be asking you the question. So please make sure you read the instructions very carefully. Well, that's actually going to conclude the lesson for today. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, until next time, bye.